Well, good morning. Uh, this is Paul Fawcett uh, <clears throat> from Associate Pastor from Grace Ministries, as uh, as well as uh, the leader of A New Beginning. And it has been a while since I've uh, been online with you. Uh, my wife and I both have had a little sickness, but we are both doing much better now. And uh, I encourage you that if you see my wife, Kathy, between now and Saturday, if you will wish her a happy birthday, that will be greatly appreciated. Uh, this past year has uh, brought to us a number of challenges. And some of you have faced challenges even much greater than we have. Uh, but it's been a difficult time for her. It's been a difficult time for us. But thank God she's doing better. She uh, is on the road to recovery. And we're just so thankful for that and thankful for what God has done for us. This morning... I want to talk with you for a few minutes about feeling numb and devastated. I don't like to come on here and talk about uh, downfalls or a negativeness because the intent is to uh, give positive feedback. So I hope this morning, in just a few minutes, I can take a negative situation and show how it can be turned into positive. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, you know the difficulty that I feel with this topic, but I just feel that it has been laid on my heart. And I ask you, Lord, to intervene and use my mouth as your instrument and put the words into my mouth that you want these people to hear. For this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world when you have a loved one that has been on addiction or been in addiction and they seem to uh, be improving, that they have gone a while without using. And then there comes the day that some of the people will turn back. And you are feeling confident prior to that that your loved one is making progress and moving forward. Well, there's a couple of uh, ways that this can occur. One is just a simple mistake and they go back one time that is much easier to deal with than a loved one that has been in recovery for a while but yet they slip back and they go into recovery I mean go into active use again I'm not going to lie to you. It's devastating. And that's where it's so important to lean on God. You see, it's not uncommon when that happens to feel numbness, to feel an emptiness in your life. But that's where when you have someone in addiction, you have to work even after they are clean for what could happen down the road because you can't control it. You can pray and you can have a loved one go back into addiction and you can go to the altar or you can pray by yourself and say, God, I give it to you. But I want you to understand that even when you do that, most of the time, it takes time for this to settle in your, in your heart again. 
It's not just as simple as walking to the altar and saying, God, we're in a situation that I can't control. I give it to you. You see, it's that human nature about ourselves that still has in the back of my mind, is there something that I can do to change this situation? And ultimately, we all know it's not. It takes time to deal with these situations. I don't want you to feel like that you are an outcast for feeling this or that you are no longer a Christian because you feel this. Because it's, I don't want to say normal, but it is a, a regular occurrence for people to feel that. There is scripture found in Psalms, Psalms 38, 8, that says, I am numb and completely devastated. And it goes on to read as this, I am numb and completely devastated. I roar because my heart's in turmoil. You know all my desires, O Lord, and my groaning has not been hidden from you. You see, God knows what we're going through, and God wants to be there as a comforter for us. But we have to allow him to fill that void or that role in our life. And it takes time to get that feeling back. I don't want you to feel like that, that you're doing something wrong because you don't feel that at this time. You have to continue to search God. You have to stay in God's word. And if possible, you need to find someone that you can trust, that you can discuss these situations with. And don't feel ashamed to find a counselor, a professional counselor, that can help you to overcome. That's what they're here for. That's what God has placed these people here with this talent, with this skill, is to help us when we feel emptiness and numbness. Now, depending on the, the therapist uh, uh, beliefs, they may handle it a little differently, but they are not going to tell you that your higher power cannot help you overcome what you're feeling. If they do, get the heck away mm -hmm. from them. You see, we know and we've all heard, if we've been in church for any time, that with God, all things are possible. And with God, if we come to him, he makes our burden lighter. When we are heavy laden and we give him the problem, he gives us peace. I want you to know that you're not wrong or you're not doing something the wrong way. If you don't feel that peace immediately, it takes time. The body has to, or more so than the body, the mind, the mind has to wrap itself around the turmoil that you are currently going through. But I can promise you that by having your faith in God and working with God, he will give you this peace. And it's a peace that no other person can provide. Because when that loved one is going through addiction, you know that, that as bad as I hate to say it, that anything is possible. What they have worked 
for so long to accomplish can all be thrown away again. And there's nothing that you can do about it. So it's important that you focus on yourself and the rest of the family. I'm not saying give up on your loved one. I'm just saying give it to God, pray to God, and say, God, it's in your hands. And it may require you to have a certain amount of separation from your loved one to be able to deal with this yourself. So don't think you are a mean person or you are heartless. It's called tough love. And God knows what you're doing. And it's in my heart to believe that God supports us when we do that. Because God is going to place other people in our loved one's life to help fill that void that we may have to apply to maintain our normalcy in our life. It's decisions you don't want to make. You know, the truth is, we make so many decisions every day that most likely we make decisions every day that we really don't want to make. But we make them anyway because it's a part of life. But when it gets to the personal level that it's our loved one, it does make it a little bit differently. Or a little bit different. But the importance is that we make a decision for ourselves. Because that loved one has made decisions for themselves and they have consequences to pay. You know, the sad part is when a loved one goes through addiction, it doesn't just affect them. It affects the entire family. And the closer the family members are, the greater impact each person feels. And every person has to deal with those feelings individually. But God made us as individuals, and God will help us as individuals. He knows what the driving point in every one of us is. And we've got to know what that driving point is in our life and work with God to help us to see that life does go on. You know, I can't sit here and tell you how great God is. He has done so much for me and my wife and our family. He has, uh, I've seen my wife overcome sicknesses. I've seen myself overcome sicknesses. I've seen my father, stepmother. I lost my mother to sickness when, when I was only approximately 21 years old. I lost a grandmother when I was about 21 as well. And I lost my other grandmother when I was around, oh, probably 12 or 13. So I know what it feels like to feel a loss in your family, and it does hurt. But that's a different kind of hurt than when someone lets you down. And that's why it's so important, number one, to take it to God. Number two, if necessary, find you a health care professional that you can talk with and can help you to fully overcome 
You may not ever feel the exact same again. I have to be honest with you. But what I do want you to know is that with Jesus Christ, he can give you the contentment and the peace to carry on with life to where you don't feel empty, to where you don't feel numbness. So when this happens, it does come down to it's a decision that we as parents or as loved ones have to make. What choice will we make? God also gives us a free will, just as our loved one has a free will to determine whether they want to go back to drugs or not. Well, we have that same free will to determine, are we determined to move forward in our walk with Jesus Christ? I can tell you that's the only way you're going to find peace to deal with this. And it's not just with drugs, it's with other things in your life that you can have a problem with a loved one. You've got to get, turn it over to God and you've got to depend on God to help you through this period. You see, no matter how hard we try, we still have that humanistic part of our lives. And some of us, and I'll say me for an example, I have just been trained for so many years to have an analytical mind that when I am faced with a situation that rather than making a hasty decision, I find that I do better when I draw back, focus on what is at hand, focus on the what ifs, the what nots, and then what is really going on. And I find that in my life, when I do that, I can face these situations a lot better. Because that's the way that God has equipped me to deal with situations. That is the talent, if you want to call it that, that he has given me to deal with this. Sometimes it allows me to see things that I don't see when I'm caught off guard with something. Some people are talented to wear they can respond immediately, and others are not. But today I'm going to close with this. There is no question that Jesus Christ loves each and every one of us. Christ is here for us. Christ is here for that loved one that may be in addiction. He cares about them. He cares about them just as he does you and I. But we have to remember that God never forces himself on anyone. It is their individual decision that they make to bring him into their life. Now, we can pray that that happens. Sometimes the loved one has to hit rock bottom. And I mean rock bottom to where they're on their knees in a jail cell. It doesn't make it any easier. And you don't have to turn your back, but you have to separate yourself from that situation. Because it's not you behind those bars. It's someone that you care for deeply that is behind them. And they themselves have to decide what they want to do and how they want to live the rest of their lives. No matter how hard you try, you can't change it. 
no matter what you do, you can't change it. So learn at an early stage, my only out is to give it to God because he can give me the peace that I need to deal with this situation. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these words that you've placed in my mouth today. Lord, I just hope that they are a comfort. I hope that this has not been presented in a way that it makes people feel bad. I just hope that it gives them a sense of hope if we just lean on you. Lord, you are the Almighty. You are the one that has all the power. No matter what we go through in life, there's very few things that we can control ourselves. Especially when it deals with someone else, because we can only control what we as individuals do. So Lord, be with us. Give every person the peace to know that they can only control the decisions that they make. And Lord, be with people that may be feeling pain to help them come to grips with that no matter what has happened, they are not the cause. Lord, you are a loving God. And it's times of these situations that it's hard for even Christians to relate to that. But that's where we have to depend on your word and stay in your word and know that you were there to take that heavy load off of us because your burden is light. And you give us the strength to overcome. And Lord, with you, all things are possible. So for this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.